Good evening. Welcome to uh, the Dexter Community Schools Board of Education meeting. This meeting is a meeting of the Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is time for public participation during the meeting as indicated from the agenda. Upon request to the superintendent, the district shall make reasonable accommodation for a person with disabilities to be able to participate in this meeting. We will call it the meeting has been called to order. Hopefully, you do the roll call. Mr. Alvarez? Here. Mr. Arnold? Here. Mrs. Brewerling? Here. Mrs. Greaterex? Here. Ms. Kankas? Here. Mr. Lundy? Mrs. Sawera? Here. Next on the agenda is uh, the approval of meeting minutes from July 18, 2022, and July 28, 2022. Your packet includes the meeting minutes from both of those meetings. I move that the Board of Education approve the minutes from 718 2022 and 728 2022 as presented. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All those in favor of approving the meeting minutes from these two meetings uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. This may have passed. Next is the approval of the agenda. Board policy provides that the superintendent of schools shall prepare an agenda for all board meetings as directed by the president of the Board of Education. I move that the Board of Education approve the agenda as presented. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion for the agenda? All right. And all those in favor of approving the agenda as presented say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Move on to our school presentations. We don't have any. And so we'll move on to our first opportunity of um, public participation. During public comment, each speaker is allotted a maximum of five minutes for a total of 30 minutes unless otherwise notified. Each speaker will be asked to announce his, her, their name, and district of residence and indicate if he, she, they represents any organization or agency. No person may speak more than once on the same subject during the same meeting. Those wishing to receive a personal response from the board or superintendent must complete a public comment form available at the meeting entrance or on our website. In addition, as presiding officer, I would like to remind everyone that public comments should be should pertain to Dexter Community School District matters and concerns related to the operation of schools or to matters within the authority of the board. Those who wish to speak shall direct all comments to the board and not to staff or other participants. Participants. Also, speakers addressing the board shall take into consideration rules of common courtesy. Speakers who make attacks of a personal nature and or do not abide by the rules of common courtesy will be reminded of such rules by the board president or presiding officer. Such individuals may be asked to leave the meeting if their behavior is disruptive or interferes with the orderly progress of the meeting. Also, please understand that board members do not respond to public comments, but we will listen very carefully and will follow up as appropriate. If there is an immediate need for clarification, we will do so after the speaker's allotted time. Is there anyone who would like to speak first? Okay. Can I just talk regular? Yeah. I can use my teacher voice. So my neighbor's here. Um, my name is Wendy Martin, I'm a Dexter resident, um, and I just wrote something here that I'd love to share. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Wendy Martin, and I'm a Washington Intermediate School District teacher and employee and the mother of a class of 21 grad and uh, soon to be senior in a few weeks, which is hard to believe. Um, it seems these days you don't often get an opportunity to say much without words, tone, or meaning getting twisted or misconstrued and used as ammunition for the next grade to get. For example, many in the district were against the village, being very vocal, using cute pictures and farm animals to encourage the public to vote no new taxes. They succeeded. 
While there are many reasons that the Milosh did not pass, you'll have to admit that the negative campaign achieved their goal. When it didn't pass, memes and TikToks were used to celebrate. When we received an email confirming that the village did not pass, realities were shared, and some people got whiplash changing what they meant. And then it turned into even wilder accusations that our superintendent and school board didn't care about our seniors. I am certain that that is not the case. Of course, you guys care about our seniors, but the focus is now on starting the school year, which I believe it should be. I wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you to the board for your dedication to our schools, the way you are able to refrain from responding to the never ending social media beat downs. You don't take the bait, and yes, there has been plenty of bait. You remain dedicated to your position, you remain professional, and you have remained kind. I know some of you well, and others not at all, but I do know that all of you have a dedication to making the board to a professional and productive place, and that feeling is strong. I imagine you don't often agree with each other, but you do what's best for Dexter. The barrage of emails we receive, the constant questioning and criticism, the asking questions that are not their business are all answered with grace. We will have a choice in November to elect two new board candidates. We will have the opportunity to decide what kind of candidate to choose from. Do they have extreme views? Do they believe in publication? Are they pro Dexter schools? Are they pro science? What does their past social media tell, media tell us about their beliefs? It takes a dedicated and patient person to sit on a very public board and I wanted to thank you for your hard work, hard decision making, and keeping Dexter Schools a very safe and important place for me. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Yeah, for that first opportunity for public comment. <clears throat> Move on to welcoming Griffin. Sorry, I didn't want to start the time before. That's all right. What was your first practice? First practice of the season, yeah. Uh, well, I'm Sorry, we'll get to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to administrative and board updates, starting with the superintendent. So, first, I want to talk about the multi generational activity village that did not pass last week. We were asked by the community to try to find a stable funding for the seniors. We did promise the seniors we would help them find a new location when we sold Copeland. We were, since the 90s, we supported them with a one dollar a year lease. When Encore took over the building, they supported that same lease agreement with, uh, it, I think it's $200 a month now. Um, the challenge seniors had was stable funding for operations. They still have that challenge. As a school district, our only option to support seniors was also was through a recreation village, but a recreation village had to support all members of the community. Um, we cannot fund a senior center for a K-12 school district. It's illegal. It's, but we are a community school district and we will help them find a home. It could be in this building or another space. Whatever we do, we'll need some renovations. As a school district, we can pay for those renovations. Um, we could if it's a shared space. We Parts of it, but it has to be justified. So, just saying that the toilets aren't appropriate because they were built for kindergartners, that's not something we can do. Um, I met with the senior center representative today, still working on plan, not B, plan G. Plan F, they are going to keep working, but one of the challenges that they still have is they still need stable funding. They're, the municipalities in the last year have started to step up, provide some funding. But they can't run a senior center on a shoestring budget and serve the members of the community. As far as the school district with the multi generational activity village, we it's time to get school started. It's we have to get school started. We have a chance to actually start a normal school year. It's time to do that. Um, other updates: we are looking for special education teachers, like every school district in the entire country. Um, if anyone knows anybody, send them send them our way. We uh, are able to change the law in this newest state budget that retired educators can return to work without the limitations they had before with their pensions. So we are looking at how, even for special education, if there's retired teachers from other places that maybe decided during this pandemic they didn't want to want to do that anymore, but might have decided they just retired a little early and want to come back. We're happy to be with them. Uh, we're looking at how we can have retired teacher substitute teach for us because there's a dire shortage of subs. 
we were just trying to work through the logistics. It's a new law. There is uh, no clarification whatsoever. It's supposed to be there all for nine months, but it looks like ORS is just saying as of the date the law was passed, they're just starting fresh nine months from that date. So they're grandfathered everybody else in. Um, sports started this today. There have been kids all over the campus, all over the place. We're officially kind of back. Um, and then we are making a change with our consortium courses for next fall. Historically, building trades has been working at either building new homes in Saline, or the last several years have been working on a habitat for community home in Ipsy. With the changes in mortgage rates, et cetera, the habitat homes is, uh, habitat's really pulling back on what they're doing in terms of homes. So we are working with the building trades courses to instead of going out to Selene or Ipsy to post them here and do a couple big projects. So one of them is we have these sheds that are over at the Creekside Field. So we're gonna have the building trade students build us a bunch of sheds that will teach them how to do different roofs, doors, overhead doors, et cetera, as introductory. Then we use them as storage around the district. And then the blue house next to the roundabout, they are going to start working on that house to uh, do some outdoor work and some indoor work. And then we're going to work on another project or two around the district that will take for full teardowns and rebuilds so we can learn every aspect of the work. Our students will be involved in, in addition to the students from the other high schools that are sourcing course. So that's getting started. Craig McCullough has been the point of contact to make that happen. He is, uh, he's had fun. Um, and then uh, one of the Lauren Thompson High School Assistant Principal just had a chapter published in a teacher ed textbook. Uh, teacher resilience. So just announced today. And then um, we have in the info items, we have the farm to table grant we received from the Department of Ed for our purpose school. Things are getting ready to ramp up. We're hiring and uh, we need staff. We have probably 50 to 80 openings right now. So we have to get those staff. And it's just, it's hard in hourly jobs. Most people don't take an hourly job five weeks before they're supposed to start. This is about the window we start to really hire. I had a question on the on the uh, retired teachers. Is there? I couldn't find anything much on that either. Is that a limit on how long they teach after retired? That's similar to the state police, but they allow the state police to do. It's almost exactly what they do. So we had the legislative session last year. We were talking about it, and they can only do five years. Yeah, That's just similar to physicality, right? But teaching is. Yeah, there, there used to be a limit that um, teach or retired educators could come back to earn up to one third of their final average, unless it was in a critical shortage area. And the district paid what was the UAAL, it was the unfunded accrued liability um, into the pen. So we would pay a percentage of pay back into the system, et cetera. Um, the law was recently changed to because of such shortages. So the pipeline is dry up. For example, in the UP, they graduated three graduates last year in the entire UP with a special education service. So we have some serious challenges in education and at every career where you go to now hiring science, but in education, we have some serious challenges in staffing. So one of the pools to pull from our retired educators and not punish them on their pensions, because um, what would happen is if they went a dollar over, they lost a whole bunch of pension and their health care retroactively. So it, uh, they just all our ass actually got Office of Retirement Services instead of chasing it all the time, it was like nine months, they're out for nine months. Because what they tried to do when they put the limitations before would stop people from retiring today and magically appearing a month from now. So it's, but they're also looking at how to solve our shortages. We have, we are in much better shape than our surrounding districts. There are districts, Alpena announced recently that they are like 18 teachers short, and if they don't fill it, they're not open to school. So this is what's happening around the country. We are right now, we need, I think, three special ed teachers and one media teacher. So that's where we're at. We're continuing to work. It's looking for them. Is, is the state doing anything as far as advertising out of state? And the reason yeah, I say that is because with the, all of the laws going on in different states, politics, but some teachers are probably going to go to certain states. Some people are probably going, you know, whichever reason. Some people are going to leave certain states. Um, they have yeah. eased up the certification transfers from state to state. 
but it's still not perfect. We're not a practice state, so we don't have automatic transfers with certifications. And there's parts of the state law that are unchanged with certification, but FDE is trying to be as flexible as they're allowed to within the laws. And the other challenge is we don't want to just take people off the street and say you're going to be able to teach third grade. They're, they're, it's a specific skill set to teach reading. It's a specific skill set to teach high school kids in different subjects. We, but the pipeline has been has been drying up for a long time. This was going to be a problem without the pandemic. It's just exacerbated because of the pandemic. Any questions? Yeah. Next is the board president's um, update. Um, I just have a statement to read about the BAM. Um, Dexter Community Schools has for many years enjoyed a great relationship with the Dexter Senior Center, and I didn't fully know the extent of that relationship until I became a trustee on the school board. I knew their space was right next to Copeland, but I didn't know that the seniors rented it from the district for a very small annual fee of a dollar. And over the nearly three years that I've served on the board, I realized that it is a strong relationship both not only on cheap rental fees, but also on integrity and trust. Helping the seniors is the right thing to do for all the right reasons. And something that perhaps not many people knew about the district's role was in, in, in it until recently. We were glad that the seniors trusted us enough to turn to us to help them find a stable funding source through the multi-generational activity village. And I am disappointed that we didn't we were not able to win that support from the community for them. The district will, of course, continue to help seniors as much as we can by providing space for them and mates if that's what they would like. We are not able to use the district funds, as Dr. Tim has said, to renovate the space into exactly what they had hoped for, uh, hoped to expand it into. We also cannot legally use district funds to help grow their programming or our outreach services. However, I feel like I need to make this point clear. DCS cares about our seniors and will continue our support for them. With this millage, we had also hoped to offer more opportunities for kids and adults through the Community Recreation Department for no fees for district residents. The Community Recreation Department will not disappear and hopefully it will continue to grow. As Dr. Timmons has said, Dexter Community Schools will not be revisiting or proposing another recreation millage at this time. We are already, already a week into August. Target has consolidated their back to school section to make way of work following Christmas. And despite the heat, the inevitable is coming, the summer is ending. School is starting in just four fast weeks, and we need to return to our main focus education. All right, we'll move on to Griffin. All right, so uh, school year is coming up. Sports have started, as uh, Dr. Seamus mentioned. People are back out in schools, things are feeling normal. Uh, no one is really having to wear masks or anything, worrying about that, especially when we're in the pool, so we never really could. So it's good that we're back to something that is somewhat normal as well as the uh, marching band just happened. So the marching band is getting back to normal. The first football game is now moving to September 2nd. And then Dexter Days is coming up this weekend. That's a pretty big thing for the school. And other than that, just four weeks left. Like you just mentioned, so it's going up soon. Thank you. Move on to Dr. Tim's update. Um, we have um, resignations and your packet includes a resignation letter from a for social workers here at this. Oh, sorry. Oh. So your packet includes resumes uh, and recommendations for hire for open, open teaching positions at the Dexter Early Elementary Complex Creekside and Dexter High School from principals uh, Brooks Bidham, Tammy Wright, and Melanie Nowak. I'll move that the Board of Education approve the consent items in all. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent items in bulk. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All those in favor of approving the consent items in bulk, say aye. Aye. Uh, any, uh, all those against, say nay. Thank you. Moved. All right, so we'll move on to our action items. First is to approve the 2020. 2023 school calendar on July 26th. Uh, the DEA ratified a 2223 school calendar. A copy is included in our packet for review. Uh, there's a small change in the uh, in the, the time that the school lets out. I move that the Board of Education approve the attached 2022 2023 school calendar. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Just for clarification, the, the, the 
day has been extended by a minute, two minutes. One minute. Okay, one minute. One minute, and that will give us how many hours to visit here? Uh, 11 over three. Okay. And more in the elementary. So it's like 11 a week. So that's the this one's already been this one that was for the teachers. Yes, the teachers read it for that is yes. Any more discussion? Okay. It's been moved and seconded and discussed. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Um next is uh, our uh, administer hiring recommendation or packet includes a letter of recommendation for hire Abby Holland to the Open Creekside Assistant Principal for the position. I move the Board of Education to offer the probationary administrative account to the position of assistant principal to Abby Holland for 2022 2023. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I just would like to hear again just a reminder of the process for hiring. Like people interviewing them, contact. We generally, what we do is we build the posting. We have staff in the building, um, some of their administrators who are around the board and meet and greet. So instead of screening down just five or six candidates and we have a big pool, we do the short meet and greets and then we send that down to full interviews with a large committee. And then we generally have a final round to myself and another administrator, sometimes teacher union rep. This was a unique position because the teacher union president is a teacher in the building and worked as a colleague with Abby um, in that building. And all that, which they were all, there, there were three people working there. Yeah. Abby was one. Discussion? It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Moving on to the pajama one, of course. Oh, pajama. Oh, oh, yeah. sorry. It looks like pajama. Pajama. That's the original. Oh. So then, it is. Oh, it is. Yeah. I know. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I've seen this many times. Your packet includes uh, the executive sum summary regarding the recommendation to add Amosia courses to the district course catalog due to credential credentialing criteria for international baccalaureate. Dexter High School has been limited with some of its course offering. These courses are available through a potential trusted online vendor, Amosia. By offering virtual IB courses through Amosia, we will be able to provide additional learning opportunities for our students. This um, we're discussing the so I'll move that the board of education approve the addition of the courses to the district course catalog. Second, it's been moved and seconded. Discuss, yeah. okay. Um, sorry, no? the just you know, so I did a little research. I was talking about because my kids were all in the program. I talked to a lot of people that were very by the BP mixed. Um, and this is not just it's just a good thing. This is one that's offered. Didn't realize that there were more opportunities, but there's not, and there's no charge to us unless you use only if you use only if you use it. So uh, I thought there might be a charge just to sign up for it. So it's a basic building. You have kids taking ID and AP, it's a challenge sometimes getting the right courses to finish your ID diploma. It's trying to get the course. So I have a question too. Is this um have the same requirements as the rest of every class is the level of the high school. Yeah, um, Emoja is the only vendor or the only online option that I need to acknowledge. Um, <coughs> help work with Emoja. They were out of the UK for a long time. They worked with Emoja to develop the courses to meet for IB use. They also, um, what's unique about the courses for an international baccalaureate program is that at times they, a lot of times students that take them will take an ab initio language course because they were not track to take the language course that we offer face to face, or they'll take some unique classes of business and management courses, or a class that fits their particular interest, or because they have a schedule conflict. Um, and what happens is the instructors are not always from the US and the fellow students are from all over the world. So you're really in an international program with 
kids internationally. Uh, they're really high quality courses. They are pretty tough. Um, so on the school end, you know, we sure to give the students the support to keep them going along. What happens, we've offered IB courses or AP courses online for years, and we go all through Michigan virtual and prevent them and some other options. IB, we did historically offer promotion courses years ago, but then we kind of phased away because our kids wanted face-to-face -face courses. Now, through the pandemic and prior to it, we started to see a huge uptick prior to the pandemic of high school students wanting to take at least one online course. Um, and at one point, we were about 300 students that wanted to add at least some online course. So this fits with what they're looking for. Um, and it does help us with scheduling so our running classes are too small. If we have two or three kids that want to take a class, it gives us that option. It does not for all the courses for many IB mm -hmm. offers as well. It doesn't. So it does not for all of the offers once I think that gets you through the hurdles you probably have to It gives some options, no, not unlike AP online courses. It gives some options that we may not have had 15, 20, or 30 kids at one to take, but there might have been two kids at one to take. So it gives them the option to pursue something that would be interested in. Yeah, I think that's nice because I know right now the IB diploma. If you want to take your like your HLs or your classes, you're kind of limited in what you get. Especially if you're like social studies. If you don't like world history or psychology, which are two like pretty niche subjects, then you're kind of like these are two just social studies HLs. So I think this is good. Are these going to be out for this fall? Yes, we actually wanted to put it on the agenda back several weeks ago, but we're uh, that was the business meeting and we like it's possible for the next. Uh, they are, we do have students that would like to take it to solve the scheduling issue so they can pursue the diploma or to fill part of the schedule. Are these live taught classes? Is that their students and teachers who are talking about that? Yeah, does that fit? They do. Well, most of our online classes are asynchronous. These, some of the courses, like the language courses, have a synchronous component. Every once in a while, they'll do a discussion and they'll figure out what time zone it is. So that students can log in. Um, a lot of times they'll take and put students from similar time zones and we might have the students in the class from in South America. So at least the time zones are similar. They've, they've been doing this a long time. I worked with them in my last district like 13, 14 years ago. So they're 14 years wiser than how they do it. It's gonna be a according to Denmark, it's gonna be a four hour time zone. So it'll be plus or minus four hours of classes. And after three weeks, they can opt to drop it. So, so it's not working because of whatever reason they can opt to drop it. Different students perform in different settings. We have some students like on like this, some do not. It's not. Oh. Anybody else? Sorry to know. Well, I was just going to say, I sent, um, I sent a list of questions to Dr. Thomas, and I appreciate all the answers. I guess my only, I understand the need that this is meeting in our district, and so I'm happy to support it for that reason. I guess I would just like to sort of encourage that we continue to prioritize, you know, finding the teachers who are certified, encouraging the teachers to get certified, and encouraging the in-person. I mean, I really do appreciate the global focus and the ability for kids to do that. Um, and I think our kids are all online classes in a much different way. I guess I just want to make sure that this stays a, um, a smaller you know, subset of people. I think I'd really like to know that our kids are getting in class with each other. If there is the interest, that we find the teachers and not sort of just one. That's how we, we found, for example, AP, micro and macroeconomics. Originally, we'd have two kids that wanted it online, and it grew to 15 or 20 kids. And then we said, well, we should probably offer this ourselves. That's how some of the courses take shape. One of the unique, unique problems that using promotion classes will help us with is when we have students that move internationally. And for IB, there are the six areas that students need to take. And one is you can study language and literature in your native tongue. So if your native tongue is not English, you need to take an English, well, you can take English as your language course, but not as your literature language course. 
So Peloja, it does give us options to offer some courses for our one-offs that we have to navigate. We, we, get one, we get students like that about every other year. Every other year, we're scrambling trying to figure out um, our proximity to Ann Arbor. We do get a lot of international movement. Um, we do have our international students sometimes that do stay. And uh, we, and we, we have a more diverse country of languages. And if their native language is not English, we have to find other options. And this gives us some, some options. It solves a lot of things. I think just, I also think that adding some flexibility to the IB program will be, will increase the number of IB graduates. I think we, there aren't that many kids that do the full IB diploma. So I think just giving, because it's, it's really demanding and the flexibility, um, you know, maybe if you have a class later in the evening and you're also in sports or whatever else, you may be able to, to do the IB uh, diploma. So I, I, I support it. But I also like the integration of, um, students from around the world. I think that's really cool. I did have, and it wasn't a Dexter example, but I was able to go back to when I was an A during school. One of the first schools to do IB, we were a little ahead of Dexter at the time. The Dexter, when I got here, we're, we're, it was it was deja vu in all of this. Um, I did go back to their ten year reunion of the initial group this summer, and I talked to a few students that are now out of college <coughs> working or a couple are working on it. So going to medical school and so finish his PhD. And they were talking about when they took online classes and what worked and didn't work and how that actually helped in a lot of ways from where they are now. It was it was fascinating, just unprompted. Like, you know what we did? Classes. It was, and then we get here and then I get back and we're going, we gotta do the schedule thing and then the high school recommends what we can do with some stuff. It was, I mean, it, they are they're good questions. And it's an option for our kids. I appreciate the flexibility it adds as well. And I think, like you said, it, it gives them a, an opportunity for students to take classes that aren't usually offered um, and maybe be able to grow it. So that's exciting. Anyone else? Um, just a couple thoughts. I have questions. Um, generally, I'm in favor of adding names, having a junior. The IB course back, familiar with the, uh, the hold at this point. So that's nice. And I do like the virtual component. A lot of kids like virtual to have the mix. So to being able to expand the options and just have the virtual flexible option, I think will be good. I actually had my only class that I remember from high school from almost 30 years ago was one of the first like virtual classes in my school district where three of us from my school district and kids from a couple different countries and all different states so literally we went class up to the class and it was because there was eight kids from around mostly around the country but there were two international so it was a good experience and they make it work and they went to college so nothing good there and my only question is but my only question is Logistics. It, how is this going to get implemented for the fall? I mean, the kids have already gone and kind of selected their preference for courses and stuff. Is, is this going to create a logistical nightmare to come out to get schedules out or allowing kids to pick for the fall? Uh, with IB, I mean, this would most likely be one of the full IB students, which we need to come out for. Yes, we've been working through options. There's a couple of kids that this is going to so it'll be a small number for this year, probably have it flow over the years based on interest. So it probably happens two students a lot of it, two students decide who they are, um, and whoever they talk to will make decisions. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor to approve the addition of District course catalog, say aye. 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 Any, opposed? Any opposed say no. Okay. All right, it is passed. Um, moving on to the school meals price increase. <coughs> includes a summary memo from the food and nutrition director, Jennifer Madison, regarding the proposal of increase in school meal prices. This item was previously discussed at the July 18th. 
2022 meeting. This item is presented for action. I move that the Board of Education approve meal price increases to three fifty for combined five or you know, five through six, and three dollars and seventy five cents from seven to twelve, and also increase breakfast prices to a dollar seventy five for <coughs> five to five through six, and two dollars for grade seven to twelve for the same calendar year of twenty twenty two. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I think it's important to, to note that obviously we are uh, immune to prices going up, so we have to make this price increase. All right. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say aye. And last is the MASB training approval. Our packet contains information about two upcoming MASB training opportunities. The Summer Institute taking place August 19th to 20th, 21st, pardon me, in Muskegon, and the Annual Leaders Conference scheduled October 20th through 23rd in Traverse City. In addition to approving funds to attend conferences, the board typically pre approves trustees to attend up to six MASB board certification classes twice a year. Funding for attendance includes registration, travel, meals, and lodging. I vote that the board approve funding for attendance at the Summer Institute and Annual Leadership Conference for any interested trustees, as well as funds to take up to six <coughs> CBA courses between now and December 31st, 2022, for any interested trustees and superintendent representatives. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I am not able to attend in August, but I would be interested in um, discussing the October 20th and 23rd uh, conference. I found it, I went last year and I just found it really um, educational. You're we surrounded by people from around the state, superintendents, um, lots of board members, uh, some community members. Um, but I, I highly recommend going and um, I just think it's a great opportunity for us to to learn and, uh, and there's also lots of training from 6 to 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, so it's early. you start at 8 a.m. and you go until 9 p.m. It's a long day, but it's it's good. Of course, we'll choose a delegate for that meeting if we were in person. One of those is such a big been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Right. We don't need any discussion items. So we have our second opportunity of public participation. Uh, now each speaker is allotted a maximum of three minutes for a total of 15 minutes, unless otherwise notified. Uh, same as before, each speaker will be asked to announce his or their name and district residence. And indicate if he, she, they represent any organization or agency. No person may speak more than once on the same subject. Um, please be courteous. Speak to uh, address the, the board with all your comments, uh, not the staff or other participants. And um, we will listen, but we won't um, comment unless there is clarification that is needed. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone who would like to? Board, uh, Kevin Creech, Webster Township. Uh, the school calendar recently came out. I noticed there was no line items for finals for the high school. I don't know if we're planning on finals this year. I know you can come to seniors in the last class to actually experience a final. And I know it's going to be challenging for our kids as they go to college. So I'm hoping that we as a team determine whether finals are advantageous to our students. I think they are. We want to. Determine educational outcomes. We don't like standardized tests. So, did they retain the material? I don't tell me that. So, uh, I think we should review that as a team and um, bring it back. That could be our valuable for our children and help us to understand whether they are retaining material that they are doing. So, thank you for your consideration. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak?
uh, we will move on to our next item, which is board conference. Yeah, yeah, comment. No, I'm sorry. I thought I was going to speak. So this is more for a community at large. If I just want to take it it's on Zoom. So and this is public knowledge. Everyone knows it. It's out there. It's in the news. But when school starts, be kind to the teachers. You know, like like always, right? Uh, but you look at the school, the teacher shortages. Some states are very severe. Very severe. Uh, Florida, I think there are between nine or twenty thousand teachers are short in the state. Uh, Arizona, big shortage there also. Indiana's running, well, I don't know any of Arizona's running a crisis. And there's probably every state's having the same problem. And so just say nice words to your teacher. They don't need to be treated like crap. Uh, we got plenty of politicians that are doing that. Uh, I don't care which party you're from, but remember the teachers, at the end of the day, we all love them, we all profess to love them. You don't get paid a lot. We all know that. Uh, limited by the state budget. It is what it is, right? But you know, you look at the reasons for most of them leaving, and a lot of them are leaving not because they don't want to teach, some, but they don't. The risk versus reward, the risk of caring for our kids and, our, and the students and mm -hmm. nurturing them and helping them grow with the adults uh, is being outweighed by the. This is called some of it's COVID mental abuse. Some of it's just the mental abuse that's. Being pushed down the room. So, as everyone comes into school, keep that in mind. You can attack the school board, you can attack everyone you want to, but please, teachers, well, the teachers just they deserve, they deserve respect. That's all I can say. Thank you. 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 Thank you.